the record should show that uh, the jury as well as the parties have returned to open court. Uh, and you just observed, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Ms. Thomason and I were reconnecting. Um, when she takes down all the testimony today, well, every day, she does it in a language that she went to school to learn. Uh, the computers that we have now will translate it from her shorthand to an English transcript that I'm able to use and actually take notes in at times. Um, and just with the moving about to accommodate uh, the last witness, Dr. Feaster, um, it, it, the technology didn't like that. So we took just a moment to get reconnected. So thank you for your patience. Uh, the state may call its next witness. We call Dennis Murphy. You're headed all the way over here to the witness chair, Mr. Murphy. Watch that step. Please pause and raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Go ahead and be seated. There are just a couple of rules in the courtroom I want to remind you of, Mr. Murphy. Uh, it's important that only one voice speak at a time. So I'm going to ask you to pay attention and allow the, not that you won't pay attention, but allow the, the uh, attorneys to finish their questions before you begin their ans your answer. And I'm going to ask them to uh, give you the same courtesy to make sure that you've finished your answer before they ask the next question. And would you please tell us your full name and spell your first and last names for the record? Dennis Murphy, D-E-N-N-I-S. Murphy, M-U-R-P-H-Y. Thank you. Oh, and if you could bring the microphone just a little closer and direct that right in front of your mouth. There you go. Perfect. You may proceed with your examination, Mr. Maybanks. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, how old are you? 69. Where do you currently live? Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Are you working currently? No. I do some volunteer work. Retired? Yes. And how long have you been retired? Oh, since 2016. What did you do for your career? I started off in Council Bluffs Police Department in 1974. Uh, moved to the Cedar Rapids Police Department in 78. Retired from there in 2006. Spent close to a year delivering auto parts. Then I worked part-time at a Tyson's. After that, I was employed by uh, court security for the federal courthouse in Cedar Rapids. And that's where I retired from. Great. I want to ask you some questions about your career with the Cedar Rapids Police Department. You mentioned you started in uh, 1978 there, is that right? Correct. And you retired in uh, 2006? Correct. What positions did you hold at the Cedar Rapids Police Department? Most of it was as two different positions. One was uniform patrol, and then from 1987 till the close, I was an identification officer. So can you tell us uh, a little bit about the job of identification officer and what that entailed? We were basically your crime scene investigators, uh, called to different scenes, different types of offenses, look for pieces of physical evidence, uh, and collect those, preserve them, examine them to our ability, and forward them on uh, as required for further examination by other agencies. Photography fingerprints, and other pieces of evidence. On or about the time period of the end of December of 1996 in January of 1997, were you working as an ID officer for the City of Cedar Rapids Police Department at that time? Yes, I was. And did you have an opportunity to become involved in the investigation of the cold case homicide of Michelle Martinko? Yes, I did. You started in 1978, so were you there when the homicide occurred? Yes. Okay. 
uh, I was on uniform patrol at the time. To your knowledge, had the uh, homicide investigation remained open uh, from the time that it occurred in 1979 until that point in 1997? Yes. To your knowledge, were there certain items that had remained at the Cedar Rapids Police Department uh, since the um, time of that offense or near there to in 1979 and 1980? Yes. Okay. And were those items, to your knowledge, still there at the police department in evidence as of late 1996 and early 1997? Yes. Where were they being stored uh, in terms of the police department on or about that time period in 96 and 97? At that time, we had uh, moved into the new station. The evidence uh, area was in the basement right adjacent to the Identification Bureau, um, and the evidence items would have been stored there. Did this include items from uh, cold cases such as this that had been uh, with the Cedar Rapids Police Department for uh, a couple of decades or more? Yes. Tell us, if you would, uh, based upon how items of evidence were stored at the time in 1996, in 1997, uh, how that was done in order to ensure there was no alteration, tampering, or substitution of items. Well, there were uh, property officers that were assigned. Their job was to uh, take in pieces of evidence uh, mark them for storage so they could be retrieved and ensure their integrity uh, in the evidence uh, area until they were required or requested by someone else and then produce those items uh, which would then be signed out to them to the individual requesting them uh, so that there was a constant basically log or uh, knowledge as to who had those items. Did you have an opportunity to retrieve, among some other items from this investigation, an item that the Cedar Rapids Police Department had identified as item J in a paper sack described as victim's dress, pantyhose, and panties? Yes. Did you also have an opportunity to retrieve an item described as C-1, a sealed envelope containing the blood from the shift selector from evidence as well? Yes. Do you recall what your reason for doing so was uh, in January of 1997 and December of 1996? In the course of their continuing investigation, uh, they had developed a potential suspect and some of the items were believed to have further evidentiary properties involved with the blood that was collected from the initial scene. Uh, advances in technology made it possible for more information to be obtained from those items. So I was requested to get them ready to send to the state DCI lab, a Division of Criminal Investigation lab, for further uh, evidence processing. May I approach a witness, Your Honor? You may. recognize 17D? Yes, I do. And um, what is uh, this document generally? This document is generally a statement of request from the Cedar Rapids Police Department to the Division of Criminal Investigation Crime Lab uh, for the uh, further processing of items that were going to be transmitted to them and what the department was asking them to do. 
Is this document in the form of a letter then from the Cedar Rapids Police Department to the DCI crime lab? Yes, it is. Is uh, this letter something that's crafted and completed in the regular course of business activity at the Cedar Rapids Police Department at that time? Yes. And based upon your review of the document, was that done by, um, well, were you involved? Yes. Does that contain your signature? Yes, it does. Did you have knowledge of the matters contained in there? To some extent, yes. And is, was it typical for the Cedar Rapids Police Department to retain records of these things? Yes. Does that appear, appear to be a fair and accurate copy of a letter uh, dated January 2nd, 1997, with your signature on it containing the matters uh, that you just described herein? Yes. Move to amend state 17D. Without objection. 17D will be received and made part of the record. We'd like to publish that, Your Honor. You may. That's going to come up, came up behind you right there, Officer Murphy. Um, no, the, the copy isn't the best here. Um, I want to direct your attention to paragraph three, um, where it indicates, after examining the physical redress, physical evidence retained from, this, from the case, we are submitting to you the victim's dress and the known samples of her head hair to attempt to establish her DNA pattern and compare this with the blood found on the steering wheel or shift selector to establish if it was in fact, her blood or that of the suspect. You see that? Yes, I do. And was that is that a good uh, description or rendition of the purpose for which uh, these items described herein were being uh, prepared to be sent to the DCI crime lab, crime lab on this date for further analysis? Yes. So did you then um, prepare the, the items for transport or yeah. delivery? Yes, I did. And um, did that include specifically the uh, victim's dress or Michelle Martinko's dress in the uh, scrapings from the gear shift selector? Yes. When you prepare those items to be delivered to the Cedar Rap or to the DCI crime lab, uh, did you have an opportunity or was it a uh, regular custom as well to examine those items to ensure that there had been uh, no tampering, alteration, or substitution of them? Yes. When you examine uh, those items to prepare to uh, transport them and deliver them, were you assured uh, or did you assure yourself that they were in the proper condition to deliver before transporting them and delivering them? Well, the main concern was to make sure that the packaging was still intact and that uh, items contained within it were still there. Uh, also, during the course of time period, uh, there were some changes in the manner in which things would be packaged. And as a course, of examining these, I had to open the packaging, so then I repackaged it afterwards and sealed it up again. And um, when you did that process, uh, did you note or take note of any kind of uh, substantial or significant alteration or uh, other form of tampering that may have taken place with those, or did they look like they were in uh, decent order? Excuse me, order? I'm going to interpose an objection. Uh, I'd like to water hear the witness, if I may, Your Honor. You may. Um, officer Murphy, uh, you testified that you came on as a patrol officer in 1978. When did you begin your tour as an ID officer? 1987. So do you have any personal knowledge about the condition of the items that you forwarded to the Division of Criminal Investigation between 1979 and when you came on as a patrol, uh, as an identification officer and submitted these items 
to the DCI lab in 1997. Do you have any independent information about that? No, I don't. Okay. Then uh, we object to the, the uh, form of the question is lacking in foundation to establish that the witness has personal knowledge about the matters he's been asked. Response to the objection, Mr. Maybanks. Uh, if I could rephrase the question, um, Your Honor. You may. Did it appear to you, Officer Murphy, just based on a overall observation of these items, that uh, they had been altered or substituted or tampered with uh, from any obvious sign? Again, Your Honor, the same objection that the witness does not have personal knowledge. Response, Mr. Maybanks. Uh, that's just based on an observation of the items that there appear would there be any obvious tampering or altering or substitution that took place. To that specific question, the objection will be overruled. Uh, Officer Murphy can testify regarding his observation of the outside packaging to see whether there was any obvious tampering. And did there appear, appear to be any evidence or sign of that? No evidence on the outside packaging of any interference or tampering. When you were with the Cedar Rapids Police Department in uh, you were undertaking these procedures. Uh, how generally were the items of physical evidence such like, the, such like this associated with cold case homicides stored in evidence? They would be assigned to a particular shelf and location in the evidence room and would be generally separated by boxes or containers or a portion of a shelf from one another. Uh, in this particular case, I think I was assisted by uh, property officer McLeod in retrieving them from that shelf. And when you retrieved those items and had an opportunity to observe them as uh, we're discussing here, did it appear to you that the, based on the customs at the Cedar Rapids Police Department and your experience, that proper care had been taken to ensure the integrity of those items were preserved? Yes. Did it appear to you they had been properly stored in evidence prior to the time that you accessed them? Yes. You may. And the witness wants to mark the state's exhibits uh, 17K and 17L for identification purposes. Um, Officer Murphy, did you have an opportunity to review these exhibits prior to today? Yes, I did. And um, do you recognize uh, any of the items contained thereon or the photograph taken in, in these uh, two pictures? Yes, I do. And what generally does this depict? This pati these particular exhibits depict some of the packaging that was on the uh, uh, dress, pantyhose, and panties after I examined it in preparation being taken to the DCI lab. And does this contain um, some uh, evidence card on it, at least the 17K? Yes, it does. Okay. Can you explain? Um, what it is that you did in order to um, prepare these items for transport and delivery? Well, they were originally packaged in a paper bag with an old evidence card on it uh, and multiple staples in through the card and the sack to secure the sack. Uh, in the process of entering the sack, the old card got torn up pretty well. So I remade a new evidence card, and then uh, after examining the evidence, repackaged it, and then resealed the bag so that it could be taken to the DCI lab. Also, I believe uh, I probably put a sticker on it for uh, biohazard. Uh, Is that sticker evident on 17L? Um, Yes, it is. And 
what is that sticker intended to uh, depict or to convey? It's a precautionary move to indicate to anybody handling it that there's the possibility of bloodborne pathogens and contained in the packaging. And did you uh, use the appropriate measures to seal then or reseal the package? Yes, I did. When you accessed the package, was it still in a, a sealed state uh, and properly preserved? Yes. Um, and was that repackaging procedure then done to um, comply with some of the new standards the DCI had, um, had in place? Yes, due to the, uh, as I recall, the, the standards were to have it sealed. I don't think they wanted any staples coming in because of the possibility of catching themselves and puncturing and adding contaminants to the evidence. So it was sealed with uh, tape then. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, did you mark on the uh, new package then uh, the fact or the event of you repackaging? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you then tape, as you just described, the aforementioned uh, new evidence card that you prepared for the package? Yes, I did. Is that depicted in, in 17K, this new evidence card? Yes. And uh, do both of these exhibits also depict uh, evidence tape or evidence uh, measures used to seal or reseal the package? Well, the uh, tape that's visible here, I believe, is that that was placed on by the DCI lab uh, after they had examined the items, because they would have had to repackage it in order to return it to us. Did you um, use uh, or take measures to seal the package uh, containing the items um, when you transported it? Yes, I did. Okay. And um, is that a fair and accurate copy then of your, uh, your writings and the, this uh, evidence card that you uh, would have prepared and attached to the um, package noted? Yes. Okay. Uh, move to Interstate 17K and L, Your Honor. Mr. Spees, have you had an opportunity to review those proposed exhibits? Yes, and we have no objection. 17K and 17L will be received and made part of the record. Officer Murphy, with regard to 17K, and uh, we can go ahead and put up on the screen here. There we go. What, what date uh, did you repackage um, the items that are described on the evidence tag as dress, pantyhose, and panties? It would have been December 31st of 20, or excuse me, uh, 1987. No, excuse me, 96. Okay. It's a few dates there. It says 1231-96 there. Is that when you repackaged it? Yes, it does. Okay. And um, is this the evidence card you've been talking about that's uh, been uh, affixed to the package containing uh, those items? Yes. And does this also denote, um, in parentheses, uh, letter F being uh, associated with this? Yes, it does. Could you explain uh, the markings on the evidence card? Uh, the markings were my printing indicating the case number, uh, the victim's name, what the items contained in that package, and who originally had found it, and improperly marked date of when it was found. And uh, you indicated there, uh, under complainant, is that the same thing as victim in this case? Michelle Mardico? Yes. And the offense being homicide, the date uh, on top is 1219 of, of, is that 79? Yes. Okay. And then, as we've discussed, the articles uh, described are dress, pantyhose, and panties worn by complainant. Uh, underneath officer, can you explain what you uh, put there? Uh, at the, on the original card, uh, it was Officer uh, Richard or Dick White who had packaged it, uh, and I then wrote his name in as the original officer. And you put an X on the property of the complaint in there. Is, is that intended to associate that property with being the clothes worn by Michelle Martinko? 
Yes. And then the next date says 1219 of 80. Can you explain that? Not really. Um, I think it's an error on my part. Um, didn't check close enough. It, and it might have been that uh, that was when it was originally packaged by Officer White. Uh, I can't tell you, but I know that the date does not coincide with the offense. Uh, it probably would have been in his possession for a while before it got packaged. Uh, the process of taking care of bloody materials are that you need to have it air dry before it's packaged. And it could very well be that it wasn't until that date that Dick White packaged it. And uh, Officer White testified earlier about that procedure and indicated um, what he did um, and didn't quite take, it didn't take that long, but noticing this, you had the same day, 1219, a year apart, and just trying to figure out what, what that may indicate there. Um, is that a trans could that be a transcribing error? Very possibly. Okay. And you, your attempt here was then to recreate this evidence card, is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. So after the evidence card was attached and uh, was prepared to transport, did you indeed then take it to the uh, Division of Criminal Investigations Laboratory? Yes, I did. May I approach a witness, Your Honor? You may. <coughs> okay, the witness would have marked as 17E for identification. You recognize that, Officer Murphy? Yes, I do. And, um, and 17E, well, can you tell us what kind of document that is? It's a property receipt form that the DCI lab uses uh, for the acceptance of items uh, submitted to their agency. It's uh, prepared prior to going down to the lab and then uh, when it's received by them, they start the heading on the, uh, the top of the page and later sign by re who received it and my signature is there as having been uh, the person that presented it to him. And is this a uh, document, again, that is kept uh, in the regular course of business activity through the uh, Division of Criminal Investigations in association with uh, apart departments like yours that submit evidence to them? Yes, and I believe a copy is kept by the uh, Cedar Rapids Police Department also. And this, this uh, contained in, uh, on the exhibit an indication that you delivered the um, aforementioned items, the dress, the um, pantyhose and panties, and also the gear shift selector to the Division of Criminal Investigations for further analysis? Yes. Okay. Move to admit states 17E, Your Honor. Mr. Spees, have you had an opportunity to review that proposed exhibit? I have, Your Honor. We have no objection. 17E will be received and made part of the record. And I should back up just for a second here. Um, well, actually, let's go ahead and show that. We talked about um, Exhibit F already on the bottom there. There's uh, several columns. Um, we talked about that in regards to uh, exhibit I, then, which is the uh, fourth one down, described as the blood from the shift selector. Um, do you have a notation on there as to, or is there a notation in, on there as to how that was packaged? There's a notation on there, yes, and that would have been created by the people at the DCI lab. Okay. And it's in evidence, and uh, can, can you tell us what that, what that says there? On Exhibit I. the gear sheriff selector. Yes, sir. It looks like sealed ENV, which I would take it as envelope, uh, 
and then an abbreviation that someone else would have to explain. I'm not sure what it's supposed to mean. Uh, could it mean containing or? It could very well. Okay. Um, when you prepared the um, exhibits for transport and delivery, um, it appears from this uh, exhibit in your prior testimony that you also delivered um, what's been des designated by a laboratory as State's Exhibit I, or Laboratory I, blood from the shift, sub shift selector. Do you, did you uh, also indeed then, as indicated by this, deliver the blood from the shift selector? That would be item I, yes. Okay. And um, when you prepared that item uh, for delivery, uh, was that done pursuant to the um, procedures at the Cedar Rapids Police Department, to your knowledge? Yes. And um, was that uh, package, uh, when you delivered it, properly sealed with uh, uh, on the outside of the package, no indication of tampering, altering, or substitution? No indication of that. And when you delivered this to the uh, Division of Criminal Investigations, there's an indication it was received by a certain individual. Do you, can you read that signature on there? Marsha Morton. Okay. Does that indicate a, a, an employee of the laboratory who received it then through their processes of uh, receiving evidence for analysis? Yes. May I approach witness again, Your Honor? You may. Take that down. Any witness would have marked uh, State's Exhibit 17F. Officer Murphy, you just take a look at that for a second there. Um, have you seen that before? Yes, I have. Does that also uh, contain your signature on it, like the uh, other doc documents we Yes. And uh, can you tell us generally what this is? This is a letter similar to the other one for submission to the DCI lab, crime lab, excuse me, uh, for reexamination of some of the items from this case for uh, reprocessing or heightened or uh, improved processing for the analysis of evidentiary value of some of the items. <clears throat> and uh, on the date of this letter, were you still involved in the uh, investigation of this case along with your other duties? Yes. <clears throat> and um, based on your review of this document, was this letter made at or near the time that the dress and the gear shift selector were delivered again to the DCI lab? Yes. And as you, as you signed that letter, did you have knowledge of the matters contained in that letter? I was advised of it, and I had some knowledge of the fact that uh, procedures and abilities in the DNA field had changed or improved, uh, and the need for reexamination of these items. Is this a uh, record uh, that's also kept in the regular course of business activity through the Sea Rapids Police Department? Yes. And is it practice for the police department to keep those records? Yes. Move to enter State 17F, Your Honor. Any objection, Mr. Spies? Yes, uh, Your Honor, may I uh, voir the witness, please? You may. Officer Murphy, uh, you testified that you submitted the uh, items, in particular items uh, F, and I to the Division of Criminal Investigation Laboratory in January 1997, and you resubmitted them to the DCI Laboratory in February 2002. Do you have any personal knowledge of what happened to those items of evidence during that five years? As far as what the processes were that the DCI conducted with them, no. Uh, I do know that they were back in the Cedar Rapids Police Department Evidence Bureau, which is where I obtained them for, from for the next trip down, which is indicated in this letter from 2002. You, uh, you, in between there, no. Yeah, so you've testified that there is a constant log kept of all these items of evidence, and do you have 
personal control over that constant log? No. And you're not an evidence custodian or a property officer, are you? No. <clears throat> Do you have any independent knowledge of when the items sent to the DCI laboratory in February of 1997 were returned to the Cedar Rapids Police Department? No. Uh, we object on foundation grounds to this exhibit, Your Honor. The, the witness has no personal knowledge about the whereabouts of these items. Response to the objection, Mr. Maybanks. <clears throat> Your Honor, I've, I could just ask a couple more questions of the witness, I guess. You may. Okay. Um, Mr. Or Officer Murphy, former Officer Murphy, um, when you uh, were involved in the crafting of this letter, did you have knowledge of where the items mentioned in the letter were? Yes. And where were those items? At the time this letter was formulated, they were back in the possession of the Cedar Rapids Police Department. And you had knowledge of that fact, and that was uh, one of the driving purposes of crafting this letter so they could be sent back? Yes. Okay. All right. Your Honor, um, our response is that this is not being offered this time as any kind of chain of custody uh, exhibit. This is offered and based upon Officer Murphy's knowledge at the time uh, in this letter, which I believe is February of 2002, that uh, he knew those items to be back at the Cedar Rapids Police Department, and they were being sent back at that time. We've laid all the foundation for a business record exception to any other uh, objection. So um, at this point in time, he's laid proper foundation for it. Any uh, additional objection or response, Mr. Spies? We stand on our objection, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, the exhibit 17F uh, will be received over Mr. Burns' objection. Uh, the court notes that it is, it is a letter. Uh, so. Uh, that document, 17F, will be received and made part of the record. Um, why don't you, we go ahead and just publish that really quick. Can we do that, Judge? You may. had been previously submitted, as we've testified to here today, or as you have, uh, to the lab in 1997, and those same items are being received? Yes. Thank you. And that's all I have for this one. Right. Cross-examination, Mr. Spies. Thank you. May I approach? You may. Yes. It, it's identical to an earlier exhibit about which you testified, right? Yes. In fact, it's uh, identical to State's Exhibit 17K. Correct. We offer Defendant's Exhibit A1 in evidence. Any objection to A1? No, Your Honor. A1 will be received without objection. Okay. So if I may re remain at the witness stand just for purposes of pointing out items on the exhibits. You may. Officer Murphy, you, you told the men and women of the jury that in the process, can we have a 17K up on the screen, please? portion of 17K in Exhibit A1, and you testified uh, for the men and women of the jury and for us that, uh, as I understand it, you reproduce the evidence tag that bears the uh, signature or the name D. White. Is that accurate? Yes. And in making this facsimile, did, 
Did you duplicate exactly what was on the previous evidence tag that was full of staples? As best I could. Um, it was pretty well punctured. Well, I'll grant you that it was pretty well punctured, but is the information contained on that evidence tag the same evidence, uh, same information that was found on the original evidence tag that you prepared this substitution for? If there's any differences, uh, it would be in my my process of remanufacturing it. Can you speak up just a moment? If there were any differences between this and the original, it would just be my my reproduction of it. Well, explain that for us. What what differences would there be? Well. It says D, D white. Well, that to me is Dick White. His name is Richard, but I always knew him as Dick. Yeah, and he and, just, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. And the uh, date of 1219 of 80 is just an error on my part, I believe. Well, it's, it's not an error if, if you took the information off of the original tag and put it on this new substitute tag, is it? If that's the information that was on the tag, then no, it would not be, All right. which would be an indication that Officer White had sometime made a new tag for it also. Well, Officer White said that he, he never used the initial D for evidence tags. He used R. So would that be an error on your part? Well, as far as being a totally accurate and complete rendition of his tag, yes. Well, we're talking about some pretty uh, uh, accurate stuff here. So let me ask you this question. You told the men and women of the jury that this December 19, 1980 date could have been when o Officer White packaged this uh, these materials after he examined them. Is that what you told us? Yes, it is. And so you think between December of 1979 and December of, of 2000, or excuse me, of 1980, that this material would, would have been unpackaged by Officer White? It may have been. Were you aware, uh, Officer Murphy, that this uh, that those items were sent to the FBI laboratory in March of, of 1980? I knew at one point they had been sent to the FBI lab. Unpackaged? I don't know about that. Are there any other inaccuracies on uh, the evidence card that you prepared a substitute for? I don't believe so. So when you repackaged uh, the items after 16 years, over 16 years, did you examine them yourself? Briefly. And uh, when you opened up the package from 1979 or 1980, these items were all bundled together, weren't they? Yes. In other words, the panties, the stockings, and the dress were all bundled together in one bundle. Yes. In uh, Submitting these items uh, to the DCI laboratory first in 1997, uh, you were asked by government counsel if you had information about uh, their condition, and you said you had some knowledge, you had knowledge to some extent. And granted, you didn't come on as a identification officer until, again, what year? 1987. So before 1987, you would have had no information about the condition of these items. Not direct. You had some knowledge to some extent. Yes. The, um, the testimony you gave us earlier that there's been some change in packaging standards, and the uh, change in packaging standards that you've testified about were that the DCI lab no longer wanted staples on the packaging, right? Correct. And uh, probably there was some change in 
being able to warn the DCI lab if there was any biohazard in the packaging? Yes. Were there any other changes in packaging that you were being uh, given particular attention to? Not that I recall. In your uh, work in this case, uh, Officer Murphy, did you handle the scarf that was found on the body of Michelle Martinko? I don't recall that I did. And in fact, in um, submitting items to the FBI laboratory, excuse me, the DCI laboratory, you specifically mentioned that you were sending the dress, pantyhose, and panties in 1997. Is that right? Correct. And then, again, the laboratory receipt that you testified about earlier, the uh, laboratory receipt from the DCI laboratory of November, excuse me, January 3, 1997, specifically mentioned that they received the victim's dress, the pantyhose, and the panties. Yes. And similarly, when you re resubmitted this in 2002 to the DCI laboratory, again, you submitted a sack containing the victim's dress, pantyhose, and panties. I prepared it for sending down. I was not the person to deliver it. It was uh, delivered under your signature, but granted not delivered by you. I prepared the form, but I wasn't thought, I was not the uh, person that physically delivered it. It was uh, submitted under your authority, wasn't it? Yes. In um, submitting these items to the Division of Criminal Investigations, uh, you talked about repackaging the panties, the pantyhose, and the dress. Did you repackage the blood scraping from the gear shift selector item I? I don't recall repackaging it. You might have? Well, I probably would have contained it in another uh, paper container, possibly an open sack. But repackaging what was contained in it, no. Um, I wasn't sure what kind of state that blood from the uh, gear shift would be in, and I had no reason to open it and possibly lose it or contaminate it. So importantly, uh, Officer Murphy, in describing for the men and women of the jury the course that those, that the panties and the dress and the uh, pantyhose took between December of 1979 and when you repackaged them in 1996 or 1997, you don't know individually or specifically for, on your own knowledge what happened to the property during that time. Can you repeat that? I'm yeah. not quite sure I'm up to date on all your... You don't have any independent knowledge of what happened to the panties and the dress and the pantyhose between 1979 and when you repackaged it in 1996? No, I do not. You assume that maybe uh, Officer White left it unpackaged between 1979 and 1980? No, I do not assume that. Well, you told us and you told the men and the women of the jury that when you made this new evidence card that between December of 1979 and December of 1980, 
It could have been that Officer White didn't have the stuff packaged. No, I stated that that was what I saw on the card that I was reproducing. As to whether or not Officer White had repackaged it in 1980, I don't know. Well, wouldn't you know from the records of the Cedar Rapids Police Department if he had repackaged it? Couldn't tell you for sure. Thank you. That's all I have for you. Redirect, Mr. Maybanks. Yes, Your Honor. Officer Murphy, um, so being a witness in this case, you weren't here to listen to ID Officer White's testimony, right? That is correct. Okay. And um, if it were up to you, would you rather have the jury in this case consider Officer White's testimony or your assumptions of what Officer White did? Well, I know that the items were submitted to the FBI, and I believe it was in 1980, and the FBI had particular uh, protocol for how things were to be submitted to them. It could very well be that Officer White was following those protocols and packaged them in 1980. Um, I don't know. I'd have to ask Officer White. And that was my question. Officer White already testified in this case. So um, would you rather have the jury consider what Officer White testified he did or you being asked by a defense counsel to guess what he did? I would go Officer White's testimony. And on uh, 17K, uh, on the top date, when you put, yeah, we'll go ahead and put it back up. The top portion of the uh, evidence tag there where you fill in 1219.79, it looks like before you, before you might have written something else and crossed it out. Well, it was in the 80s when I saw it, or the 90s, and uh, I've been prone to making those errors. Okay. I think you've already answered this, but where did you retrieve the evidence in 1996? From the Evidence Bureau, uh, which is next to the ID Bureau in the basement of the uh, Cedar Rapids Police Department. Is that Again, is that where evidence is kept when it's not being retrieved to be sent somewhere else? Yes. Based upon your involvement in this case and your recollection, did you have any reason to believe that that evidence, um, the gear shift scrapings in the uh, dress, had left the Cedar Rapids Police Department from the time Dick White or the FBI handled it until you grabbed it? I don't have any knowledge of it. Would it not, would it be custom for items that were not um, being taken out to be delivered to be left in evidence? That's where they would stay unless someone within the department was going to uh, examine them for some reason. Would there be indications with evidence and, in, and at times with the packaging uh, if items had been taken out of evidence and, and delivered elsewhere in an interim period like that? That would be my expectation. Um, I wouldn't be able to give you any particular item or knowledge as to where you would find that if someone else had looked at it again for some purpose, other than a report that may have been generated in regard to that. Would you have noted in your uh, reports or in a separate report um, if you went to retrieve an item of evidence and it had been sliced open or it had been had uh, numerous indications of altering, tampering, or substitution? I don't know about numerous, but if there was an indication of tampering, yes, I would have. Okay. As an officer who had been with your department for approximately, by my count, 18 years, 
the time that or more delivered this, would you have delivered evidence to the DCI lab that was obviously tampered or substituted? No, not that I recall. With regard to uh, questioning about items being bundled together, uh, did you consider that to be an issue in this case based on the fact that all the items mentioned all came from one person or on one person, Michelle Martinko? If they all came from that person, it wouldn't be an issue for me. Uh, there would be no cross-contamination if they all came from the same person. That's all we have, Your Honor. Additional cross-examination, Mr. Spees. Yes. Uh, Officer Murphy, I, I <clears throat> apologize if, if you construed my questioning earlier as asking you to guess. I'm not asking you to guess about anything in this very, very important trial. What I'm asking you to, to represent to us is whether you're certain about the steps that you took to ensure not only the integrity of the, of the evidence, but the, the dates and the times about which you testified. So let me ask you this. When you wrote down on the evidence tag, exhibit, defendant's exhibit A1, or the corresponding exhibit from the government, that D. White had something to do with this, uh, the panties, the pantyhose, and the dress in December of 1980. Was that your guess as to when uh, this evidence was handled by Officer White? As I testified. I tried to duplicate the card as closely to what it was when I found it, even though it was tattered. I think I had a question mark in my mind at the time about that date, but then also knew that it had been submitted previously to the FBI for examination. Either that or, as you testified earlier, that, that Officer White had this in his custody that entire year and hadn't packaged it. I wouldn't know about that. One of your high priorities wasn't in why this date was a year off? Richard White put that date down it would be for him to explain. I, it, it's speculation, even for myself, that he put that date down in regard to submission to the FBI. And is it uh, your opinion as an officer trained in the handling of evidence that there's no cross-contamination if all of the items came from the same person? If they were collected and from the same person, uh, what cross-contamination would there be unless it was prior to their collection? My question, sir, was, is it your opinion that there's no cross-contamination if all of the items came from the same person? And collected at the same time. That's your opinion? Yes. Thank you. No other questions. Redirect Mr. Maybanks. No, Your Honor. Thank you, Officer Murphy. You may step down. Should I take these exhibits back to them? Oh, I'll take those. I think you can leave them right there. Or Mr. Maybanks will retrieve them.
we have reached uh, the time of the day where it's appropriate to recess for the evening. So you'll get to go about two minutes early, folks. Um, we will adjourn and uh, reconvene tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. As always, please bear in mind the admonition about keeping an open mind, not discussing amongst yourselves or with your friends or loved ones this evening. Avoid any media coverage uh, of this case, as is your sworn duty to decide the case based only on the facts that you hear within the confines of this courtroom. So try to have a good evening, and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Please rise for the jury. You can leave your notebooks on your chairs. Please be seated, everyone. Uh, Council, I wanted to just clarify something on the record. Um, the exhibits that were proposed and received uh, by the state uh, this after earlier this afternoon uh, for a I heard B as in boy. I believe Mr. Harris um, uttered V as in victory. Um, and I just want to clarify because then for A through V as in victory were received or talked about with uh, um, various witnesses. And I just want to make sure that I, I uttered the words for A, B as in boy. And I think I needed to say V as in victory. Your Honor, if I may, it would have been for V as in victory. Okay. And we okay. did then refer to exhibits, including all those letters in between. A so. number came in, and, and I assumed that I had made a mistake. So I just wanted to clarify that. I don't think you made a mistake, Your Honor, because I heard it as for B originally, too. But um, my legal assistant here has attested the testimony and exhibits received were A, B, B. Okay. So our. Okay, so, but there was no objection to state's exhibits for A through V as in victory? No, there were not. Okay, uh, so that the record is clear, um, the court re will receive uh, state's exhibits for A as in alpha through V as in victory, and they will be made part of the record. So Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Um, anything from counsel before we recess ourselves? No, Your Honor. Anything, Mr. Spees, before we go? Okay, very good. We'll see you uh, tomorrow morning. Let's try to reconvene at 8.30. Okay.